Hey, thanks for joining us again today. This is Corey with Sunlight Contractors, and we're out in Luling, Louisiana today doing another open cell spray foam job on this renovation. We're actually doing the roof and the walls in this house, and we're trying to get it done in one day, so we brought both rigs out so one crew can be spraying in the attic while the other sprays the walls, and we can get this thing knocked out. As you can see, we have a bunch of extra hands with us. They're going to be helping us prep everything because, like you always hear me say, it is much easier to keep foam off of stuff than it is to get foam off of stuff. So we're going to make sure that everything we don't want foam on is underneath plastic or behind plastic or just removed completely from the job. But anyways, while we let this play in the background, I wanted to touch on something else that's really important for our Louisiana customers and probably a lot of other states too. I do know that the LSLBC, the Louisiana State Board of Contractors, has a contractor's license for just about every trade there is in the construction industry, except for spray foam. And it's weird because spray foam is the only product that you're going to see on a residential house and, and even most commercial um, jobs that is manufactured on site. You know, we're bringing raw chemicals and drums. We're heating it up. We're pressurizing it. We're shooting it off. And it's either good foam or it's bad foam. And it is not always good foam. This is not like a paint pump where you, you turn an on switch and you pull the trigger and good stuff comes out. This is a, a, a science experiment. This is basically a chemical experiment, you know, a chemistry experiment going on in your house. So the guys that are doing this stuff have to be qualified. And so the question is, how do you know if your contractor is qualified? Unfortunately, we, that means that we have to rely on third-party organizations like the SPFA, the Spray Polyurethane Foam Alliance. Other states like California have already kind of caught up to this and are implementing SPFA guidance into their licensing programs, Louisiana is just not one of them. So it's on you as the customer to do your due diligence and make sure that the contractor that you hire is qualified to be doing this stuff. So on screen now, we're heating up, we're about to turn the machine on. And while that gets to work, it's worth mentioning the temperature difference you can see between the A and B side. This particular foam we're spraying today is extremely thin on the B side. And the only real control you have at the machine to get this stuff to spray one-to-one -one is to raise the temperature of the thicker material to thin it out basically and get it to the same viscosity as the other one. But all of this comes with experience. So here we're getting onto the older rig here. It's running an E30 machine. We're running the same temperature difference between the A and B side on this machine, except we're running 1450 PSI of pressure. And you'll see on the next machine, the newer machine, which has a lot longer hose, we're running higher pressure. Here's those manufacturer spray parameters I was talking about. You can see how the scale changes based on the ambient temperature, but they're saying 1200 PSI. The hose length plays into that, and that's what I'm talking about here. You'll see on this machine we're running 1750 feet per, uh, PSI, but that's because we have a 410 foot hose. The pressure at the gun is probably more in line with that 1200 that the manufacturer is requesting. But again, all of this changes on a daily basis. What you have to have is a, somebody that's qualified on the gun that can notice that something's not right, and somebody that's qualified on the machine that knows how to fix it. In either case, we're back on looking at the job here. You can see those bundles of foam that got trimmed off the walls. Obviously, when we're spraying out past the studs and trimming back flush, there is some waste associated with that, and you do have to build that into the price to some degree, but it does end up being a better job in my opinion. Here, Eric's up in the attic spraying the knee wall. That is just a plastic wall that goes from the top plate of the exterior wall up to the roof to cut out the porch section. You generally don't want to go out and spray on top of porches, especially if they're just vinyl. Um, it can warp and get through the vinyl and damage it. And it's just not an area that you need to spray. It's an outside area. There's no reason for insulation out there. So we generally will just cut it out. The good part about that too is behind that knee wall is clean and clear. So if for whatever reason you do need to get out there and like add a camera, add another electrical circuit, whatever it may be, you can cut through that knee wall, save the plug, get in there and do what you need to do. There's no foam in there. And then when you get back out, you can put that plug back in and put you some can foam around it just to seal it back up. Ultimately, if you damage it or a contractor damages the knee wall, we may have to come back out and make repairs. But so the job's done here. We're just cleaning up and um, I've put some pictures on screen here. Came out awesome the customer was extremely ecstatic we got in and out of here i think we started really spraying at 10 o'clock and we were gone by 1 30. so once again if you want to get in touch with us you can go to sunlightcontractors.com or you can call 504-919-9993 thanks for sticking through the video we'll see you on the next one